I uh, first want to thank the organizers for inviting me to uh, contribute to this uh, really remarkable anniversary, 50 years of PDB. And um, by coincidence, um, the uh, anniversaries of the PDB also uh, are anniversaries for my entry into the, uh, into the field of structural biology. I uh, joined the lab of uh, Robert Huber uh, at uh, what was then the Max Planck Institute for what would be, be would become the Max Planck Institute for Biochemistry uh, in May of 1971. So it's also my 50 years now. <clears throat> um, and of course, I didn't hear about the fund. The, the funding of the the foundation of the of the uh, uh, PDB um, um, until uh, maybe uh, a year later or so, um, and of course I did not notice the uh, uh, announcement, uh, which appeared in October 1971 by the uh, crystallographic data center data center in Cambridge, UK, and the Brookhaven National Laboratory. And um, <clears throat> um, when I first heard about the uh, PDB, um, I thought uh, I was not convinced that this was a really uh, necessary uh, undertaking, um, considering uh, the status of the field of uh, uh, structural biology at that time. And you uh, just have to think about the small number of uh, groups that uh, were in this business uh, uh, at that time. Um, and by anecdote, uh, my, my first meeting uh, I attended was uh, in Altbach, 1972. Um, uh, this meeting was organized by uh, Max Perutz and Malte Hoppe, uh, who was one of the uh, directors at the Max Planck Institute. And uh, <clears throat> it uh, included basically all people working in the field, uh, except for those for that, that for some reason couldn't come uh, to, to Austria uh, at the time. And uh, they all fit into the ballroom of the village uh, uh, pub. And so <laughs> you can imagine um, there were really not many people uh, doing this. And um, so the output was uh, uh, correspondingly small. Uh, <clears throat> we all used um, essentially the tools that were uh, uh, developed by small molecule crystallographers, uh, sealed tube, x-ray sources. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, huge but slow computers. And um, uh, I mean, the diffractometers and measuring one reflection at a time, et cetera. And so, <clears throat> Moreover, uh, only a few protein um, targets were actually available for this business for, for uh, uh, crystallization experiments. Um, and these were essentially naturally occurring uh, uh, proteins uh, occurring naturally in, uh, in uh, high quantities and uh, already uh, Purity. And um, <clears throat> so there was a uh, reason for skepticism. Uh, why do we need a data bank for the results of these efforts? And um, <clears throat> if you look at the uh, rate of the positions in the first uh, years, it uh, it was justified to be skeptical, I think. Um, but between 1970, 
1979. It is the, the contributions are barely visible uh, in this graph. This graph, by the way, is, is way outdated. It's uh, from 2005. And uh, the, the scale of this uh, 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 graph would uh, now be uh, five times what is shown here. Uh, I, but I, I want to concentrate on the early years. And so <clears throat> uh, there was not much uh, going on in terms of the positions in the data bank. But uh, in the same year, there was already a, uh, a, in the same year the data bank was founded, there was already a uh, sign of uh, what, what could be coming. And that is uh, this paper, uh, uh, the uh, announcing the use of uh, synchrotron radiation as a source for X-ray diffraction by uh, Rosenbaum, Holmes, and Witz. And uh, these people were interested in uh, doing small angle scattering in muscle, trying to, to figure out how muscles work. And, and they were desperate for looking for stronger X-ray sources. They were able to uh, persuade uh, the high energy physics, physicists that the uh, Deutsche Elektron Synchrotron or German Electron Synchrotron in Hamburg um, to let them uh, enter their facility and try out uh, what they can do with synchrotron radiation. And the results were so encouraging that over time, um, <clears throat> uh, various countries were building uh, dedicated synchrotrons, synchrotrons dedicated to produce uh, synchrotron radiation for uh, X-ray, uh, diffraction and similar. It, uh, it was not just uh, biology, it was uh, a lot of material science and, uh, and similar things that, that were interested in this, uh, became interested in the synchrotron radiation. And the first uh, <clears throat> uh, dedicated sources were in, in uh, Great Britain in, in Basbury and in Germany in Berlin then followed by uh, the US with several and uh, Japan and so on. And um, over time, and now in uh, not in chronological uh, sequence, there were uh, advances in X-ray crystallography, uh, as I already mentioned, more and better synchrotron facilities uh, sensitive detectors, imaging plates, charge copper devices, etc. Uh, crystal freezing uh, to to uh, allow crystals uh, to survive in in the intense uh, beams of the of the synchrotron radiation. Um, automatic data collection systems, uh, new solutions to the phase problems. Uh, sad and mad and uh, powerful cheap computers as we all know and software. Uh, uh, so all that uh, <clears throat> contributed to a uh, large um, improvement in uh, the methods uh, to uh, determine uh, crystal structures of uh, macromolecules, proteins. But uh, even more important, I think, was the uh, <clears throat> discovery of methods to manipulate DNA. Uh, for example, I, I mean, these were absolutely essential for the rapid growth of structural biology that we see. Um, uh, and examples are the DNA sequencing. Uh, uh, it's now a, uh, a minor project to, to sequence, uh, uh, determine the sequence of a protein um, or the, uh, in uh, sequencing DNA. Uh, most importantly, heterologous protein expression uh, around uh, the late 1980s, if you scan the literature, you, you begin to see uh, 
popping up the term uh, recombinant uh, proteins, recombinant this, recombinant that. And that, that were all uh, reports about uh, 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 investigations of proteins that were uh, expressed in uh, a different organism than what they were actually uh, uh, developed. And so <clears throat> this uh, greatly expanded the horizon of structural biology. And uh, of course, we could then uh, uh, design or select protein domains for structures. Uh, we could uh, label the proteins, uh, histag, for example, we could introduce site-specific mutations, etc. So that was, uh, I think, one of the most important uh, um, contributions to uh, structural biology, indirectly, of course. And so uh, in the 19, early 1980s, we begin to see in this diagram, you begin to see the bars. And uh, <clears throat> however, uh, the, the rise in contributions to the, to the data bank was not as, as large as one uh, would, could have expected. And uh, to illustrate that, uh, let me uh, uh, talk a little bit about my uh, favorite protein. And uh, that is uh, this one here, <clears throat> the photosynthetic reaction center from Blastochloris viridis, uh, published in 1985. It, uh, it has uh, four protein subunits here in different colors and 14 cofactors in, uh, in uh, ball and stick models. And uh, <clears throat> it was, uh, the structure was determined on the basis of uh, 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 an electron density map at 2.9 on some resolution calculated with uh, multiple isomorphous replacement phases. When uh, we started to build this model, uh, there was uh, only there were only small fragments of the sequences of these proteins uh, known, uh, and terminal fragments of uh, of the uh, these two, the brown, the blue, and the green uh, subunit. And so we could identify uh, the uh, the protein subunits, but uh, from then on, it was uh, basically guessing um, uh, what, what the sequence could be. <clears throat> and so uh, Hartmut Michel uh, started uh, to uh, determine the DNA sequences of, of these proteins. And it was a, a very interesting experience to, uh, to having come to the, uh, to the uh, graphics uh, display and uh, with a new piece of sequence and, and it, uh, find it in the electron density, et cetera. So uh, <clears throat> when the structure was complete, um, uh, only the, the sequences of, of these three subunits were, were known. Uh, this one was uh, still unknown and uh, only the sequence of this, of the uh, uh, purple subunit was, uh, was published. So <clears throat> when the question came up to, should we uh, deposit the coordinates in the data bank? Uh, of course, uh, it would have meant also to publish the, uh, the sequence before uh, Hartmut and his colleagues had time, had had time to publish uh, their work, uh, and uh, it was essentially uh, only fair to wait uh, with, with uh, our uh, contribution. And um, <clears throat> so we uh, did not deposit uh, the coordinates when, uh, when this, this structure was published. Only uh, three years later, we did. By that time, we had a collected higher resolution data set, uh, 2.3 angstrom. We had done uh, crystallographic refinement. 
and the sequences had been published. So uh, that was the time to do it. And I think um, uh, many uh, other people uh, working on uh, protein structures uh, were in a, in a similar situation, having determined the structure, but uh, uh, knowing that the refinement will take some time. So uh, uh, should they wait until with visit the position until the refinement was finished, should they deposit immediately? And many of them did uh, uh, decide to not deposit until the refinement was finished like we did. And uh, there were many other reasons why people hesitated to, uh, to deposit coordinates. And um, so uh, a, a little crisis came up and that is described among other, among other places in this uh, 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 article in, in Science uh, 1989, and it shows uh, the discrepancy between the number of structures published uh, uh, until that time and uh, the uh, coordinate data sets uh, deposited in the data bank. And they, of course, they pointed out that this is not viable to uh, have this gap become bigger and bigger. And um, uh, very senior uh, members of the community uh, like Fred Richards and Dick Dickerson um, uh, successfully lobbied uh, <clears throat> to uh, make uh, uh, journals and also funding agencies uh, require that uh, coordinates be deposited. And also, of course, the, uh, the image of the PDB has had changed by that time in the early 1990s. Um, uh, the, the internet uh, slowly appeared. Um, the uh, <clears throat> um, field had, be had become new members, new sources of information, NMR and cryoEM and the database. Uh, PDB did, uh, did a great job in incorporating these into, uh, into, their, uh, 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 into their database. And so <clears throat> it became a, a very interesting and nice uh, experience to actually go to the, to the website of the PDB and, and uh, uh, scan through new structures and so on. And so uh, it, it became, uh, actually became a, a real treasure. Uh, it, it became a, a, a very <clears throat> rich source of uh, all the information that was contributed by, in the meantime, hundreds of different uh, groups and about all kinds of proteins. And so <clears throat> essentially, when the, the golden age of structural biology started, and I think many people call the time between 1990 and now this, by this name. Uh, the great thing was that um, the PDB had already existed when it started. And so it was the natural place to go to to deposit data. It has shown its value uh, uh, by being a, a constant and, and, and stable organization uh, over time, even though it changed the place from Brookhaven to Rutgers and it became worldwide. Uh, but, but that was even, I, that was a big uh, advantage in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> and, um, um, but the, the most important thing was it was there when it was needed. And that uh, shines a wonderful light on the vision of the founders and the, the people who supported it all over the years. And uh, 
So there we are now, uh, knowing that our structures are safe and will not be lost when we die or uh, when, when we change our, our interests uh, or our labs undergo uh, fluctuations and so on. And uh, <clears throat> uh, then also um, seeing what this can, what, what, what the uh, contributions of all these structural determination, what they can actually do. And uh, I was very fascinated seeing these two articles in Science and Nature uh, last uh, uh, December. Um, and they are uh, very uh, enthusiastic about uh, the success of uh, structure prediction uh, that uh, had been reported in the latest uh, competition of uh, structure predictions. And it, um, as the, the, the title say, it, it describes a um, really uh, remarkable um, uh, progress in the success rate of uh, predicting protein structures. And um, uh, I cannot say that I understand how, how uh, in detail these, uh, uh, this method is working. Uh, however, I know that, and this is uh, described in the, uh, in the publication early in, in year to, in 2020, also in nature, uh, that essentially the basis is uh, uh, machine learning and learning on the basis of the data in the protein data bank. So uh, essentially <clears throat> the protein data bank is the, the basis of all this. And um, I think it is really a reason for us to be proud and to have contributed to this uh, 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 success. And I'm just curious to see what the protein data bank would do with uh, predicted structures in the future. So uh, all that remains is I want to express my uh, really heartfelt thanks to all who contributed to, to the data bank, especially those who uh, organized it, uh, made it a, a convenient uh, uh, service, um, made sure that the funding was there uh, and that uh, it continued for uh, 50 years. And I uh, am pretty sure now it is, easy to predict that it will uh, continue another 50 years unless the world is uh, coming to an end. So happy anniversary and thank you for listening. Bye. Hans, uh, thank you very much for this wonderful talk. I think uh, your description of why you held not depositing is so clear and, and so justified. Uh oh, what is that? Oh, God, hello. Hello. I was just Hans, joined. So I got some phone call here. I don't want a phone call. <laughs> I'll try to turn it off. Hans, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed your talk. Can I ask you? Um, you, you mentioned the AI at the very end. Do you think there'll be a time as well that it will be possible to predict function as well as structure? Uh, nothing Same. is impossible. Um, I, uh, I mean, this would be just a gut feeling. Um, I think uh, it is, it, it, it will be possible. I don't know when, and uh, I don't know how. But uh, considering what's, what's going on in the last 50 years, uh, nothing is impossible. <laughs>